Also, the NIT. The NIT used to be the tournament. That's a long time ago. It was in the uh, 60s, 50s and 60s. It was certainly the tournament to be in. Then the NCAA came in, and then March Madness happened. It exploded, and uh, the NIT uh, struggled to survive. And I always thought if we didn't make the tournament, one of the 68 best teams, and I wanted to already get a head start for next year, then I would play in the NIT because it allows us to continue to practice. We're going to play games. Maybe we get a chance to play for a championship. Okay, it's not the NCAA, and uh, it's the NIT. Well, Tom Crean, former coach, now an analyst for the Mothership, had this to say about the schools that don't want to play in the NIT. There's no question about it. I would want to coach. I would want to develop my team. Uh, You've got bigger staffs than you've ever had. There's plenty of time for the portal. There's plenty of time to talk to recruits. There's plenty of time to negotiate NIL deals. There's not plenty of time for guys to continue to play that may never get to play again. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is absolutely ridiculous. It's each coach's choice. I get it. But if you take away a chance to play the games, to put your team on the floor, Mm -hmm. let them opt out. All right, the bowl season has it all the time. Let it happen. Who cares? Give your players and coaches a chance to keep coaching and playing wow. and don't shortchange. If a guy doesn't want to play, go sit down. If a coach doesn't want to coach, go recruit. But there's got to be enough people to put five, six, seven people on the floor and go play. Makes absolutely zero sense to me. All right, that's Tom Crean, former head coach and uh, certainly passionate about this. So far, I think there's seven schools that have turned the opportunity down. Pittsburgh is uh, one. St. John's is one. You also have Memphis, Ole Miss, Oklahoma, Indiana, Syracuse. They already said they weren't going to play in the NIT. We have players who don't want to play in bowl games. This is almost that version of it that, hey – We don't want to play in this game. It's not important enough. But I always thought if I'm a coach and I can get playing time for some of my kids who are going to be playing for me next year, then why not take advantage of that? And you're going to have – this is the feeling I got, that some of these coaches may be covered for their players because the players didn't want to play. You know, Rick Pitino, he talked about not playing in the NIT. And I think he was trying to cover up for his his players because it felt Rick Rick would coach right now. He'd go out in you know our field house here. He'd coach a three on three game. He'd coach anywhere. Hey coach, uh, we got the championship game of the AUAA. Yeah, I'll be there. What time? He loves to coach. You got a chance to play in the Garden. You're St. John's. You're still building that program. Rick would want to coach. He would. And his players maybe didn't want to. And sometimes you have to listen to them. But I would try to use that. You get more practice time. Maybe you get a player or two who's going to be a star for you, potential star, and you get a chance to have a bigger, better opportunity there. Yeah, Mark. Do you think for some of those programs, it's program entitlement? Like, where's Syracuse? We're too good? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Didn't Notre Dame turn down the pinstripe bowl a couple of years ago? They're like, no. North Carolina turned down the NIT, I think, a couple of years ago. Syracuse, St. John's, Pittsburgh, they're like, no, we should be in the tournament. And I think that's the hard part to get over. because, But they all had their chances. Seton Hall had their chance. St. John's had a chance. Pittsburgh had a chance. They all had a chance to be able to play. It's 68 schools. You didn't make it? All right. You can still play. Hey, do you want to still play basketball? That's what is the surprising part of this. And it's maybe, you know, the kids say, no, we don't want to play anymore. Okay. But it feels like Rick Patino was saying, hey, you know what? We're going to get ready for next season. Okay. Getting ready for next season would be we can still practice. Because now they can't. Now their season's over. Yes, Todd. What are you arrogant and too good about? You know, maybe yesteryear, but you didn't make the tournament. So you're obviously not too good. You didn't make the tournament. And I think it's a no-lose proposition, other than the fact that it looks arrogant to turn down the NIT. If you play well and you destroy everybody, then you're proving to everybody you played with a chip on your shoulder that we should have been in the tournament. If you lose, then that proves even more that you didn't belong in the NCAA tournament if you bow out of the NIT. Yeah, but we see teams, college football teams, when they play in bowl games, 
and they're not really into it, and then they lose. I can't say, well, that, that shows that they weren't that good. I mean, you have to want to play. Like, you truly want to play and want to win a championship. It's the NIT. You're playing in New York, Madison Square Garden eventually. That has value to it. And another case, you know, you know, opportunity to showcase your talents if you want to play in the NBA. Yes, Eden. What if the NIT winner was guaranteed a spot next year in the tournament, in the NCAA tournament? Mm-hmm. I don't think the NCAA cares about the NIT. I don't, like, you know, because they kind of coexist, but the NCAA is really trying to put the NIT out of business. I mean, if they go to 96 teams, they're really saying, uh, NIT, thanks for the memories. Yeah, Paul. Rick Patino added that one of the reasons they passed on the NIT bid is to focus on the transfer portal because the season is over for them and uh, because they need seven or eight new players for next season and they have to get to work on recruiting and hitting the portal. Mm, okay. Uh, we so maybe say- those guys would want to play in the NIT because they're <laughs> yeah. about to be jettisoned. Yeah. Uh, we say good morning if you're watching on Peacock, our streaming partner, our radio affiliates around the country. A poll question for hour two, Seton? Yeah, I'm going to put up the one about seating. Would okay. you rather have it based on uh, like resume or matchups? All right. Yes, Marvin. Yeah, and they should probably blame schools like NC State, who weren't even bubble teams. They were going to the NIT, and they ended up winning their conference championship, so yeah. that definitely hurt a lot of the bubble teams. There were probably three or four conference champions that really messed things up for a couple of schools. Yes, Heaton. All right. This is probably a really dumb question, but I ask those a lot. Um, but aren't the NIT and the NCAA tournament all run by the same people? I mean, they're both NCAA tournaments. Yes. But the NCAA really cares about March Madness because they can make a lot of money. I was just saying, I mean, it wouldn't be that much of a stretch to get them to like, hey, what if we tried to figure this out together? And instead of adding going to 96 teams, we just make the NIT a little more valuable or something. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Easy with a thoughtful analysis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, you're right. It makes way more sense. Easy with the yes. measured I'm comment. sure they are battling it out with each other to, like, bankrupt the next Easy year. with the measured commentary. Yeah. Yeah, my yeah. bad. My yeah. bad. Yeah. 